the essentials to take on a global uh, take back. But if you can't start right here in your goddamn, don't go up there. If they seen us take back our community here in, in Detroit, in New York, in Buffalo, in LA, in Atlanta, in Philadelphia, in Birmingham, and in, in, in wherever you at, wherever you at, when you step to that Congress, they can see that they understand power. And they don't concede, that, okay, we just gonna continue, we just gonna start chopping businesses that we not fucking with. We just gonna stop, you understand what I'm saying? Now, nah, even there could bring about an aggression on us. You understand what I'm saying? Because even though we not being aggressive, if I, you know, and like when we're talking about in a violent way, then they might want to bring violence. Because historically, we didn't done the, you know, the moral way. We didn't done the moral way. And they still come with violence. You see, because that's power. You understand what I'm saying? These bitches trying to remove me from power. And power never give away power. It's wrong for me not to be in power. And so if a motherfucker talking about removing me from power, then they could get violent in that. You understand what I'm saying? And that's why we have to always keep that goddamn joker on our forehead. Let me go here. Let me go, let me go here. Let me go here. Talking this shit today. I'm talking so goddamn loud. I know motherfuckers hear me all outside the motherfucking house. I don't give a fuck. They better hear it. They better hear it. Motherfuckers better hear it. Okay. Where was I at? Hold on, family. Let me get this information up here. Let me bring this up in the house. Hold up, family. Let me bring this up. I got so much goddamn information. You understand what I'm saying? But I want to. I want to keep this calm. Oh yeah, there, here you go. Here you go. Listen, we're talking about a report. Okay, this is talking about the 100 richest U.S. citizens control as much wealth as the nation's 42 million African Americans. Did you hear what I just said to you? Did you hear what I just said? The report found that the 100 richest US citizens control about as much wealth as all the nation's 42 million Africans. The total wealth of the nation's 55 million Latinos stacks up to that of the 186 richest Americans. Okay, when you got that many, now, I want y'all to understand this. I want to go down there now and to explain how many black people are even a part of the 100 richest U.S. citizens. Okay, this can be explained in part by the rapid erosion of the black and Latino middle classes. Okay, why is there an erosion? Because the top one percent didn't provide no motherfucking jobs that they had before 9/11. You understand that was a mean to goddamn snatch back all the damn wealth in the goddamn United States of America. And that's why people are so highly upset. They destroyed the damn middle class. But when you control all the goddamn resources and the top 1% own all the damn wealth, they could dictate a move like that. They could dig, they own enough that they, they could dictate a move like that. African Americans' net worth relative to whites has fallen by more than half since 2000. More than half since 2000. The average white family today has net assets of 1,100 and uh, one compared to just 11,000 for black families, about the same sum as back in 1985. Latinos have similar declines in net worth relative to white, okay? There are many reasons for this slide. Listen to me now. Listen to me. Black and Latino families were disproportionately exposed to risky subprime mortgages. Don't matter. That's bullshit. I'm going to get had smaller amounts of inherited wealth. That's the one I wanted to get to. We don't have no inheritance. 
You understand what I'm saying? We worked for 400 motherfucking years without no pay, without no, and then we lost the major inheritance when they snatched us up from out. So we didn't lost on so many levels, not just what we worked for, the fucking inventions that were stolen from my people that were parlayed into international businesses. We, today, that we not getting no motherfucking money out of. We had something to do with the car. We had something to do with the light, the light bulb, electricity, so many goddamn inventions. And we don't own the invention because we were slaves. And so the master took the goddamn invention, took the trademark, took the goddamn ownership of it, and parlayed it into international businesses that's still passing down that fucking wealth today, babies, today. I want to tell I want to talk to y'all. Okay, I want to talk to y'all. You understand what I'm saying? It ain't even a fuck because when you really look at it, you know what I'm saying? When you really look at it, it's not just an economic, it's a it's a science and technological reparation. Because do you understand that you know a man could be a scientist and he he you know he creates a great invention, he passed that information down to his son. Who it who advances that information, say 15%, where he passes it down to his grandson, you know, his son, who also takes that information and he expands on it. You understand? Another 10% as far as advancing the technology. And then you pass, you continue to pass it down and pass, and you keep developing and developing and developing and developing you, the time, the generational time it takes to advance some of that information. You understand what I'm saying? We lost the fucking information. And so we like in the days of living in huts, you understand what I'm saying? Some of us, we in the, we in the days of living in huts, these motherfuckers flying goddamn airplanes, nigga, that could damn near go to Mars and shit. And most of us ain't even can afford a bus pass to get on the fucking bus to go to goddamn work. You understand what I'm saying? So they they crippled us in science and technology. You know what I'm saying? They crippled us by taking our inventions and shit. They crippled us be, because they control the economy. And so if you go to the university as a scientist, you can only use that that uh, uh, that that uh, ability, your abilities working for your uh, white company. And when they when you sign up as a scientist, they make you sign a contract where they own the motherfucking technology that you invent. They own that. If you lead that company, they own that goddamn technology. You understand what I'm saying? Do you know how many ways? So the fucking money, because if we had the technology, the money wouldn't be shit. That's the lease. You understand? We had the science and the fucking tech. Look at Japan. Japan was over there. If you go and look at Japan before like World War but if you watch uh, the last summarize with Tom Cruise, if you watch that movie, they show you when the British and them was coming in, United States and them was coming in then. They were still fighting with swords. And they came in there and gave them Japanese who sided with United States and Britain. They gave them motherfuckers Tommy gun. And so them motherfuckers went out there to fight them motherfuckers and they started shooting. That just let you know where they was at. In the fucking early night, late 1800s, them motherfuckers were still over there in them goddamn, you know, pagodas and with goddamn sandals on and swords on their side. They weren't no technological masters. You understand what I'm saying? They didn't went over there and then they reverse engineered every fucking thing that the Europeans brought over there. Now they making better shit than the goddamn European. You understand what I'm saying? But we've been taught out of because over here we are in prison. You're not going to come over here and think you're going to create a, 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 a second industrial or scientific community that can outdo the United States or, you know, can be used by another nation. You understand? Or you could sell uh, information to another nation. They're not about to let you do no shit like that. So they own our science and technology, not only the goddamn wealth. OK, not only the wealth. We're going to talk about the damn land ownership, too. How they done pumped us out of all our goddamn land. We had more goddamn land a hundred years ago than we got right now. Okay? So again, inherited wealth. They got inherited wealth. And so that been carried over since slavery. 
And so if they continue to carry over that same amount of wealth, and when you got 90 96% of the goddamn wealth as one race and all the other races got a split of goddamn 3.8%, motherfucker, you is in going to be forever in control. Ain't no coming up out of that unless it's by force, okay? And so you have to start in the areas in which you can start in. And we got to start right there with our damn black community. So if you look down at the bottom, it says total wealth by group. 400 richest Americans. Got more money than all the Latinos. Uh, damn near all the, the four, all the blacks. Got, you know, damn near potentially all of black uh, America and half of the Latinos is in the 400 richest peoples of America. Now listen to this. Listen to this. It says America's stark inequality is, is evident in the Forbes 400 itself. Blacks and Latinos make up a combined 90, 29% of the population, but account for less than 2% of the Forbes list. That includes blacks and Latinos. <laughs> less than 2% of the Forbes list. Oprah Winfrey and the tech investor. Robert Smith are the sole African Americans on the list. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Oprah Winfrey and the tech investor Robert Smith are the sole African Americans on the list. You got five of Latino background. Okay, so that just show you right there. You not even in that club. The niggas y'all think got money ain't got no motherfucking money. Them niggas, so they see that's just how low in the goddamn hole we in. We look at niggas that got a few motherfucking dollars is that they got money because we so fucking poor at the bottom. Okay, we looking at motherfucker, them goddamn cracker. One motherfucker got got the whole rap industry. One white boy got the the wealth of the whole black rap industry in his sock. God damn it. We just gonna be one, and so that just show you how we look at trinkets, and we just look at a couple of, you know, look at the cars and shit. That's not wealth. Them, them is trinkets. There's no record, you know. It's not flipping to each generation. You understand? You got businesses that hiring, uh, you know, a certain amount of people of the community. You understand? That's wealth in the community. We do not have that. So that's power. That's goddamn power. I don't even, at, at, you know, at, at this point, uh, you know, explaining, you know, it becomes much clearer that education don't mean a motherfucker because we just went over that. Okay. Let me, let me, uh, do I need to read anything out of that? No, that I don't, I don't need to read anything else out of that. You know what I'm saying? Let me come down here. Uh, I went over the black 1%. I did. I went over that. Let's deal, let's deal with this. Let me see. Am I? Am I? And let me see. Did I? Did I share? It? Yeah, I, I share. It. I share. It. I share. It. Okay. Let me come on up here. The five largest landowners in the United States own some nine million acres of land. I'm t I'm talking about shit that means something. You know what I'm saying? We talking about land is nationalism. We don't got no goddamn land. And I just wa watched a, a documentary not too long ago. It's called Banished. You understand what I'm saying? Where they pumped, you know, and through terrorism, whole communities of black people out of whole counties down south took the land. You understand what I'm saying? That's for us. When they got a we, they got a demand. They got will. They got aspiration. They got that action, and they got numbers. They can force they demand. They can force they aspiration. Okay, and if they, if you add. Submission with the force. If you submit to their force, that's power. You got you got white power over us to where they can make us submit to any aspirations that they got on the table. And if we ain't got no opposing force to stop them, we are in threat of eradication. They can damn near do whatever the fuck they want to do to us because we ain't got that joker on our goddamn forehead. The last, the five largest uh, white landowners in the U.S. own some nine million acres of land compared to all black America owning less than eight million acres. Five. 
five, the five largest white land owners in the U.S. own more land than all of black America. The contrasting picture comes into clear fo focus when the monetary value of that land is considered, coming in at less than 1% of the total rural land in the U U.S. Black Americans own land worth a total of 14 billion, while white Americans combined own 856 million acres. We own less than eight, and they own 856 million acres. More than 90% of U.S. land worth more than $1 trillion, okay? While those numbers are bad enough, a re recent Huffington Post article points out that the numbers have in all likelihood gotten worse since the release of the report. See, that's power. When they can tell, damn they tell you it's getting worse. It's gonna get worse. When a motherfucker, see that's power to put in the media how bad it is. You know what I'm saying? How worse it's gonna get. When a motherfucker can tell you in 2053, because they already know, nigga, you don't understand power. You don't want no power. You ain't gonna take no power. You ain't gonna do a motherfucking thing. And so if you continue in the sick minded, you know, uh, way that you go on today, they can already tell you in 2053, you ain't gonna have no wealth as if we got some now. We got tr a trillion dollar spending power. We spend it with the 1%, which keeps them more in power. And if you get some goddamn reparations without getting some spiritual reparations, without getting some cultural reparations, without getting some political reparations, and without understanding power and coming into power and wielding power and taking over the black community, I understand exactly what's gonna happen. You know, this community is slated for eradication. Okay, so, you know, you can sit back and talk all this shit and get right off the goddamn election and go right back out there and, and, and continue to do what we do. You understand what I'm saying? We got to sit down and look in the mirror and start a blueprint and start with yourself. Because if you start with yourself, don't worry about it. Because if the other motherfucker started with himself, it's going to add up. Okay, it's going to add up. A fist can knock a motherfucker out, but an open hand can slap the shit out of a motherfucker. So long as the open hand, the fingers are separate. The, the, you know, fist and hand is closed together, forming a more for, formidable force. But at the same time, you can have five assassins that just as deadly. So if those five fingers, even though separate, are doing what the fuck they supposed to do, they can still slap the shit out of a motherfucker, slap him clean off his feet. Okay? Now, you okay, can't, okay, since to, to break the numbers down even further, consider that CNN founder, Ted Turner owns over 2 million acres of land himself, which is a, which amounts to almost 25% of rural land owned by black. One man got 25% of all what we got. That's a, and so that's why I'm saying we, we, we look up to clown motherfuckers sitting up on the goddamn internet with a couple of them fake ass, fake ass goddamn dollars. And when, when, when it looked at, Compared to the, you know, the people in power, that shit don't mean nothing. Motherfucker, set your ass up and take all that shit, nigga. In ten minutes, put some charges on your ass, and your ass will be locked behind fucking bars for the rest of your life, and all that shit will be right back in the motherfucking hands of the people who gave it to you. Okay, let me keep it going. All of all private U.S. land, agricultural land, whites. Uh, account for 96% of the owners, 97% of the value, and 90% of the acres. Blacks possess 7.8 million acres of overall rural land. For a, cent for a century after the end of slavery, black farmers tended to be tenants rather, rather than owners. Since the early 1970s, activists and scholars have warned that rural black America was in danger of losing its entire land base. Land ownership by black farmers peaked in 1910. 1910, we got more shit in 19. We had 16 to 19 million acres, according to the census of ag agriculture. However, the 1997 census reports that black farm farmers own only 1.5 million acres of farmable land. That's a goddamn shame. That's a goddamn shame. 
This is where we at. Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna break this down for you. Okay, I'm gonna break this down for you. Adding insult to injury is the fact that much of this land was not acquired legally in a way that black people were comp compensated. Instead, the bulk of the land uh, of the land black people lost during the 20th century was stolen from them. See, see, that's what I'm talking about. Ain't no motherfucking coming up out of this shit without that joker. Ain't no coming up out of this shit without that joker. But you start with taking back them, them businesses in your community. Doing that first because you're going to need to understand what power is and how power operates. So if, whether you played the joker first, if you didn't understand legitimately, and if you don't understand legitimately your aspiration, you ain't going to play it even if you got it. You see what I'm saying? You So you got to first have mental and spiritual reparations long before you get any type of economic reparation and before you get any type of, uh, or you start thinking about a physical, unless it's all out. And then you have no other op option but to go all out. If it's all out, and that means that there's been an, a, a, an overt attack on the, on the black community as a whole, and you see that the operation is going down, then you play the goddamn joke. Until then, you got to get your mind right. You got to get your political understanding of power right. You understand? And once you got that, that's the that causes the snowball effect. Then you step to the reparations. Then you step across that water. You understand what I'm saying? Then, you know, everything else. And then when they see you took back your community and you understand what power is, then they understand you can hurt them. You see what I'm saying? Then they understand you can hurt them. And so when you step and say, motherfucker, I want this, that, and the third, then they gonna be un understanding that, yes, it's, it, it's a, no a negotiation with a demand behind it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you nicely. You understand, I'm not conceding. If you all you doing is negotiating, then you conceded the fact you don't have no power and you got to ask it. But I'm gonna do this because you understand, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to save face. Because if you don't wanna save face, I'm gonna embarrass you when I remove your ass from power. So this is a negotiation with a demand. Once you got that, once you got that, you know that, I took my community back. I understand what power is. Motherfuckers gonna come up off of some shit because they know when, you, okay, you don't wanna do that? Okay, we're gonna stop fucking with. We're gonna find out all the businesses y'all motherfuckers got coming over this water. Bitch, we ain't putting a dollar in none of that shit. Motherfucker, we're gonna do our best to expose you all across our, the nation. And if we already of one mind, you understand what I'm saying? Oh, we got enough of one mind. We could damage motherfuckers, okay? You'd be surprised if the community around a gas station, you know, they dependent of, of, of that community that's particularly around that gas station. If those individuals do not support that gas station, that bitch going out of business. Okay, so you have power. You have the potential of power. You just not wielding that power. Okay, now let me go down here. A heartbreaking and devastating when we're talking about most well, the bulk of the land black people lost during the 20th century was stolen from them. A heartbreaking and devastating trend during the 19th and 20th century saw black families robbed of millions of dollars in generational wealth by white communities who violently forced their black neighbors to flee time, as discussed in, in the uh, piece, eight heartbreaking cases where land was stolen from black Americans through racism, violence, and murder. If you take that title right there and plug it in, then you can see. And then, like I say, if you go, look up on YouTube at uh, the uh, look up a video called Badness, it'll come up and they'll talk about how that happened. You understand what I'm saying? And so, let me come out for, for a second. Let me come out for a second. So again, you know, as we talk about this, you know, and, and, you know, education and, 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 and economics. It's like I said, we ain't got economics. We got nigger nomics. 
Okay, we got nigger nomics. We ain't got no economics. We got nigger nomics. You understand what I'm saying? That shit ain't going nowhere, but and we going further and further in the goddamn hole. You understand what I'm saying? And it's a hard goddamn fight, and you know, and it start right there in your goddamn community. Now, let's let let me deal with some shit. When we talking about a blueprint, because I'm uh, it's gonna be a lot of people out here that got a blueprint. Okay, I didn't study under the best. You understand what I'm saying? And I know the formulas, just like I went over power. You understand what I'm saying? I went over force. And every time you see, even in other people, as we read, we could dictate a power play. Because when you hear them take the land violently, by force, because they knew the Africans had no force to repel them. You understand what I'm saying? So that's power. When you, when you got demand and you got will, you got uh, aspirations, you got action, and you got numbers. They had that, okay? And then we submit it because we left. That's power. That's power. That's the only way power works. You're not going to ask no motherfucker for shit because if he know you ain't got no power, if he know you ain't got no force, he know you ain't got no aspirations, but other than get some trinkets, he know you ain't got no will. He know you ain't got no will because he didn't beat you down on goddamn TV forever, and you ain't done shit. A few times you revolted, but you went right back. You know, they can wait that shit out. They can let you burn some shit down, get the insurance, and build that shit up even better than when you, before you burnt it down. You don't have no aspirations after that. You know what I'm saying? So you might got a demand, you might got a will, but you don't have no aspirations, okay? And where, and where you got a demand, I don't, you know, the demand may be, don't, you know, get up off of black people and you you got the wheel for a few days you understand you bring some actions and you bring some numbers but you ain't got no aspiration so that shit die out in just two three days you go right you know you burn one goddamn gas station down and you go around the corner to the other goddamn gas station and goddamn buy your blunts and this because when it come time for you to smoke that tree nigga you gonna have to buy it from somewhere so niggas was rioting only to go around the corner and and, and, and and patronize the motherfuckers, brother. So when we talking about a plan, see, we got to look at the possibilities. We got to look at the probabilities and we got to look at the impossibilities to bring about a cold, hard reality. And I'm going to go over that again. We already know what the possibilities is. OK, when you go over there, you got to look at the whole blue. We went over some of the blueprint of where we at. You understand what I'm saying? Far as education, we got education. We got five million people in our uh, uh, community, in our race, that got degree. Yet we still slated to go to zero wealth. And plus, we we went over the demographics that the one one the one percent dictate the economy. They got all the jobs. So if you're getting a degree and you ain't getting a degree in an area where there's a possibility you could get a job with the one percent, then you just going into debt. That's just reality. You understand? When you think about education, the education is the it's not the it's the curriculum. What the fuck are you being educated in? And so education is based by the powers to be. Okay, the curriculum is for them to stay in power. Okay, other than that, there is no education. Okay, there is no goddamn education. So when we look at the possibilities, what is possible? Yeah, nigga, it's possible a goddamn man could go to the moon. Is it probable that it's gonna happen in any time soon? Okay, you so it's pro it's possibilities that you know. Is it possible that white people and black people could work together? Some people assume that it's possible, but is it probable based on the years and years and years? See, people, I don't even see. Some people look at that. I don't even see it's possible, and it's not probable. And it's damn near an impossibility. If not, not damn near is a possible impossibility. So once I understand the possibilities and the probabilities and the impossibilities, then I can bring about a cold hard reality of where we going with this. Okay. And so understand, regardless to whether you want to be a neutralized nigga or you want to be a, a good, uh, you know, a good uh, initiative nigga. The enemy has a contingency for all possibilities and probability. The information that I said about taking over the community, he understands that. That's a threat to him. So he got a contingency for that. Like every nation out there, 
You understand? That could attack the United States. They got to contest whether they do it or not. It don't matter. If they got the ability to hit or threaten the uh, United States Army or any of his, uh, uh, you know, colonies or whatever, they got a contingency for it. You understand? And so if it happened, they don't have to think about what to do. They already got contingencies for it. Just like they got the King Alfred plan, if or what they call Rex 84, just in case black people or any other minority, you know, try. But it was made for black people in case we start a national, you know, uh, uh, revolution. What they go, they already got it. They got a contingency. You understand what I'm saying? So they know the reality because they say, what do we have to do to stay in power? So reality is. In order to take them out of power, it's in uh, really undoing the agenda that they that's part of it, undoing the contingency and the blueprint that they got in play. That's going to bring aggression, whether it's a, a if, if we just stop spending our money, they're going to come violently. They're going to come violently. That's how they're going to come because they're going to that's going to make, you know, if they start losing power, they coming. They is coming. The niggas that's initiating that. They come in, you ain't so, it ain't about no goddamn gun. Sometimes violent is non-violent violence. You understand what I'm saying? It's non-violent violence. You understand what I'm saying? So you have to understand as you talk this talk, the enemy already know, he already watching. So that's a part of the game too, to know he know and know he got a contingency. And so you got to flip the board and think just like he thinks. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, this is what he going to do if I do this. And so you got to keep flipping it each time, nigga. You understand what I'm saying? Know them both. Know your enemy. Know yourself. Okay? To bring about the cold, hard reality. You understand what I'm saying? That's how he know. He don't give a fuck what niggas say. He got contingencies. How many niggas getting kicked out of school every week? You understand what I'm saying? How many niggas coming in for lead poison? It ain't enough niggas coming in for lead poison. We got to fuck these niggas up in their war. You understand what I'm saying? We got to fuck these niggas up in their food. You understand what I'm saying? And so, when you talking about a plan, how you judge a motherfucker, you understand? If his plan or her plan doesn't take in, uh, you know, consideration all these situations or possibilities or probabil po probabilities, impossibilities, to bring about a cold heart reality, that plan is unrealistic. Okay? If that plan doesn't include the fact that he's gonna play violence on what he assumes is non-violent violence, okay, which means you still trying to take him out of power. You ain't talking about no gun, but you know you got the potential and possibility of power by take stop spending that trillion of dollars with these motherfuckers and start something for yourself right there in your community, that will bring a goddamn serious debt to white power. You will eradicate the air. You can, in reality, see, you can eradicate them. You can, you can, you can send that motherfucker back on a goddamn goat right now. That motherfucker can pack all this shit in a sheet, put it on the back of a goat, and you can run his ass up out of here. Now, the China man, you can run his ass up. Motherfucker, get your chopsticks, nigga, get your flip flops and get the fuck on up out of here. You can sink them. You can sink. So you have to start battles. You know you can win. And so what you have to understand first and foremost, as you understand that the enemy has a contingency for any possibilities or probabilities, you got to understand the powers to be in this nation see our people as a hostile population. And the reason why, you got to understand, as he look on his side, it don't give a fuck how you think about it. He done whooped on us. He done brutally dehumanized us. Unspeakable brutality, mutilation, rape, and, and you know, from ch children to women to men. So he done done so much that you are a hostile population. Nigga, I don't care how you smile. I don't care if your smile to your ear. I don't care if we get up and do the good nigga thing and this, that. He still see us as a hostile population. Because if he, he just like I say, flip it. If he flipped it and he put us, himself in our position, 
if he got close to any type of power where he can inflict mortal damage on us, he would do it. He would do it. He would do it. So don't, it don't matter if you smile, say, Master, I'm not going to. I'm with you, bitch. You is a hostile population. You already been checked as a hostile population. His great great granddaddy, when he he told them, don't ever let your foot up off that nigga neck. You keep it there. Once we break their back, once we break their back, break their spirit to where they don't want to move no further than the plantation. All you have to do, nigga, is stomp down every two, three times. You know the motherfucker get it is put that iron boot down on his motherfucking neck. You see what I'm saying? And so that's why we, you know, majority of our people are neutralized nigga because the DNA is in us from looking at them lynchings, looking at them, you know, them them burnings and shit. You know what I'm saying? Where they burn our bodies and lynch and, and, and mutilate us. So the fear when they even bring the pregnant women out. You understand with the children in their belly. And so when she see a man being mutilated and brutally murdered in front of, and that the fear reek down into her placenta, into her baby, the DNA. And so I'm, you know, I'm saying I'm understanding what, what white people did to our people. But even over all of that, we still gonna have to come, you know, we're gonna have to come through the wire. You know what I'm saying? We got to, we got to, you know, we got to come through this. We got to come through the fire. You understand what I'm saying? We got to come through, even through the DNA because if we don't, they're going to eradicate our ass. You see what I'm saying? And so that's been, you know, that was from the Willie Lynch because we was a hostile population. You know, back in the early slavery and this, that, and the third, them, them, them white slave plantation owners were here. The majority blacks out there in the slave quarters riled the fuck up for, you know getting you know drinking doing our thing doing our udu and all that beating them up that's why they say the drum got to go you understand because it will rile us up you know that's it gets our spirit riled and once we understand what who we are and what they say this shit everything that willie lynch put down was to keep us a, a docile nigga you understand that's why they keep putting these old fake niggas on these beats and shit because they know that the, the rhythm is an elixir to the African soul. And it's almost like a command. If you know them certain beats and shit, that shit open up the, the doorway to the African soul. And whatever come behind it, if it's some stupid shit or whatever, that shit is like a, a curse. You understand? Well, it could be a blessing, but it can also be a curse. You understand? So they know to control the music. Control, and they not giving it up. Nigga shit, but that's got to be a war that could be won. God damn it, because we in the community, we ain't, bitch, we'll take the motherfucking radio out. The goddamn car. Nigga, we don't listen to no radio. We play all our own music. Nigga, we put in a fucking uh, thumb drive or whatever the fuck we, or CD or whatever the fuck you put in and play your own goddamn music. Take the motherfucking, we don't want no radio. You niggas need the radio because you some commercialized nigga. Snatch the motherfucker, take the TV, put it out. If niggas take the TVs and shit and put it outside the motherfucking house, we don't need no TV. Okay, get get on the computer. All we need is the goddamn computer where we can work. And if we want to watch something, we can dictate. Ain't shit coming on that motherfucking TV. Throw the TV away. Stop buying TV. That's going to hurt the Japanese. That's going to hurt the Chinese. You understand? Then certain information is not being poured into your head. You understand some shit you just don't want to hear because once it go in, it's hard to get that shit out. So you don't even want to hear. I don't even listen to some of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Don't even listen to it in the first place. OK, so again, so uh, once we understand, you know, and bring about a real motherfucking plan, if you don't consider the possibilities, the real probability, I don't give a fuck what the possibilities is. And then we got decoy niggas out here that no damn well they ain't take they ain't saw this like it need to be seen they understand the possibilities the probabilities and the impossibilities and they come with a decoy plan and that's a judas nigga and he need to be dealt with no different than the goddamn cannibalistic nigga who outright you know the decoy nigga is a covert cannibalistic nigga where the, the outright overt count is the nigga that'll murder right in the street. You know, he'll, he'll rape the woman right in the street. You know what I'm saying? 
do all the sick shit. So the decoy nigga's just as bad because he coming with the covert cannibalistic because he know that the plan, there's no possibility in it. He knows there's no probabilities in it. He knows the impossibility of his plan, but he projected to the people as a reality for they, uh, you know, in in that's for the uh the powers to be that play to them to have the decoy nigga out there because it diverts the people's energy and that's what they some energy going this way, some energy going that way. Niggas this, niggas Moors, niggas Muslims, niggas Hebrews, niggas Christians, niggas this, niggas that, and all you see is a skin color, and all of us is in one slated and. When they when they get ready to put these numbers up there, do you do you ever hear them say that Muslims or black Muslims uh uh well gonna be zero or Hebrew black Hebrews gonna be zero wealth in 2053? Do it? Do you ever hear them say uh more more are gonna have zero wealth or they don't give a fuck about none of it. they they more of a pan Africanness than niggas is. Because they never group us into no goddamn group. You know what? They include every motherfucking body. And so on that note, just like Malcolm X, that shit is just a diversion. I, that's why if a motherfucker come on my shit, I'm, I'm starch. I don't give a fuck. If your shit say Hebrew, Christian, uh, uh, Moore, or any of that, you don't get on my shit. Niggas have to sneak. Niggas have to create some shit. And I still look, I don't, cause you was a diversion. Nigga, you was a decoy nigga. Cause that shit don't mean nothing when it come down to the bottom line. If it don't affect the bottom line and you diverting and you fractionalizing and you frictionalizing our people who need to be unified to a certain extent at this time or else we might be eradicated. Nigga, you was an enemy to the state. You can't get over that dumb shit right now and get the fuck out of my ear with that dumb shit and understand it mean all of us. You got to get the fuck out of my face. So, you know, and then you got decoy whites and Asians and niggas get caught up in that. And we can't be getting caught up in that. You no, know, you know, it's, it, you know, you know, just like I hear when Nip Nipsey Hussle died, you know, they say, uh, you know, we can't, uh, we can't, you know, see, we try to do something. Bitch, you ain't tried to do shit. We try to do something for your community, see what happened, and then white people be killing your motherfucking ass every day. And I ain't never hear the nigga say, you know what? They killing, I can't go down to the mall today and get them Jordans. Or I can't go down to the mall today and get them Gucci's. I just, but soon as a nigga do something to himself, then that give you an excuse to be a motherfucking uh, 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 on the good nigga initiative. You know, I can't work with the nigga. That's nigga writers. So as we talk about crackatosis, we got to also talk about niggeritis. I got to talk of we, we, you know, we talk about the cracker, but we got to talk about the niggeritis because you cannot have crackatosis without having niggeritis. I got to say that. You got to hate yourself to worship another man. Okay? We got to understand that. If you, it's no way for you to have, it's both. And usually if you got niggeritis, you got crackatosis. You got some form of worship in another man. You see what I'm saying? So them diseases go hand in hand. Them diseases go hand in hand. And so today, you know, we got decoy whites and Asians. You see them out there in the marches. You see them out in the marches. You know, they'll come out and act like, oh, they against what the government. Them is decoys, nigga. Those are faith, having fake discussions about improbabilities. You see, it's another means of diverting our energy towards the problems, the probabilities of real change. So let me go over that. Fake discussions about improbabilities. That's the decoy niggas. That's the decoy Asian. See, because the decoy white people and the decoy Asians, they can have these fake ass conversations and maintain the power at the same time. So if they give you the illusion by sending two or three decoys out, all that shit doing is diverting your energy because at the time you having the fake discussions, the, the murders, wait a minute, wait, let me, the murders, well, all the shit that I had on that one. 
Good God almighty, I got so much. DeVera, here it is, here it is. I got my shit. I got my shit. Man, if y'all would see the last, like, six videos I done did, if y'all see the amount, I didn't wrote a book. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to have that blueprint for global African supremacy by the end of this, of this year. Okay? So what am I saying? I'm saying by, you know, having these fake discussions about improbability is another means of diverting our energy, energies toward the probabilities of real change. Because while you out there with the white boy or the white girl, or you out there with the Asian or the Hispanic or any of that, you understand what I'm saying? The variables never change. They still had the same amount of wealth, but the black poverty is still going on. See, those are variables that never change because they got to remain in order for the power the people that, that's in power to stay in power. That's the parameter. And so just like an EQ, if you got, say for instance, you got that, that 50 uh, bar EQ, and you know, each you know, frequency represent ne a necessity for us to be in so that they can stay in power. So Brack, while we having this frivolous conversation with decoy whites and decoy Asians and decoy blacks, see the black poverty never changed. The black murder never changed. You see what I'm saying? You see? So all of that remains while we have in the frivolous conversation. So they can have that conversation and stay in power. That's just diverting our and wasting our motherfucking time when we know goddamn well that that ain't going to change a motherfucking thing. You, you, you know, so if the evolution of your, de of your demise, you know, th that's the evolution of your demise. You understand what I'm saying? When you allow these frivolous goddamn conversations to happen and you thinking you pushing the ball up, that's just like reparation. You pushing this shit up the goddamn hill for it to roll all the way back down, huh? And you got to start over. And each time it rolled back down, you further and further and further in the hole to the point you're going to run out of all energy to even try to push this goddamn uh, ball up the up the hill 